So today I'm going to start a new course and I'm going to present lectures on helicopter dynamics. Today starting with the first introductory lecture, I'm Dr. Ranjan Ganguly. So this is lecture one. Now we have seen helicopters flying around and we see that helicopters are somewhat peculiar in terms of the aircraft in that they use rotating wings and these rotating wings typically provide lift propulsion and control three critical functions for any flying machine now how the helicopter differs from a typical fixed wing is that it uses relative motion of the wing surface with respect to air so because the helicopter blade is moving with respect to air you are able to generate aerodynamic forces for example lift drag and pitching moment the one which is useful for us is lift here and this lift is used to generate thrust and various control moments and so on now the helicopter has an advantage that its rotating wing can generate these forces even when the velocity of the vehicle is zero. So this is a particular facility the helicopter has. And we see that fixed wing planes typically would require translation to sustain flight. So if you look at an aircraft taking off in a runaway, it needs to acquire a certain velocity before it can take off. And this velocity is required to generate sufficient lift so that this lift can counter the weight of the aircraft which acts downward. Now, if we look at a helicopter in vertical flight, we can create a very simple model for this helicopter. And we can say that there is a main rotor. The main rotor creates a thrust vector. There is a weight which acts downward. There's a tail rotor and there is a tail boom. Now, typically when T is equal to W, the helicopter hangs in the air. So this is known as the hover condition. If T is greater than W, the helicopter starts climbing. So these are some of the two basic tasks which a helicopter or a drone can do, which is powered by rotating wings, which would be difficult for a fixed wing to do if it did not have some kind of rotating wing device or some kind of jet to create this thrust. Now, when the helicopter wants to get into forward flight, the pilot has to change some control settings such that the thrust vector is shifted forward or has a component in the forward direction. So this propulsion force is obtained by the rotor by tilting the thrust vector forward and then the helicopter will start moving forward. Now, the same thing could be done for backward flight or sideways flight, for example. The main rotor is responsible for most of the forces and moments which are typically present in the helicopter. So, for example, you can control its position, its location in space, its velocity by using the main rotor. Now, in contrast, if we go back to the fixed wing with which many of you may be familiar, then we see that the lift and control forces in a fixed wing are typically provided by different control surfaces. And I'll explain these in a picture very soon. So what has happened is that a lot of engineers and scientists have been working for decades and they have culminated in a fairly standard design as far as a typical aircraft is concerned. So I'll show you this schematic of a typical aircraft so essentially you have wings, you have the fuselage, you have vertical tail, you have a tail here and so on. Now essentially you have this device rudder here which is used to, to perform your control very similar to a boat. Uh, elevator device here is used to do pitch control. So these are moved up and down. These are like flaps and there's one on that side also. So this can control the pitch of the aircraft and here there is another device which is also like a flap which is used for roll control so this is known as the aileron now for the helicopter all these forces needed for control are provided by the main rotor and the tail rotor 
tail rotor typically takes part in yaw control and main rotor does the remaining things. However, for all these advantages of helicopter in terms of vertical flight capability comes at a cost because you typically have a higher power requirement compared to fixed wing, especially when you get into forward flight scenarios. Now, some of the particular issues which come into helicopters is that you require a large transmission to transfer the power to the rotor at low speed and a light torque. Also, maintenance costs of helicopters are typically high because the rotor is a complex mechanical system and there are many moving parts here. Now, the rotor is the major source of vibration and noise, and these are problems which plague helicopters to this day. So that is something which we need to address and which is one of the focus of this course on helicopter dynamics. Now, through many good engineering practices, a successful helicopter can try to reduce as many of these problems as possible. It can have lower vibration and so on. So one of the key things in this helicopter design is the development of good mathematical models for the dynamics of the helicopter. And that is going to be one of the primary focus of this course. So if we look at how the design process takes place, you essentially have some requirements. These requirements are coming from maybe some government or some company or some business people who have specified the need to design a particular machine. It may carry 10 people or two people, and it may be required to have a certain range to hang in the air for a long time if it's doing reconnaissance and so on. Now, typically to develop this kind of a vehicle, you would need an analysis or a math model. And this math model is then used for different values of the parameters concerned, for example, the rotor radius, the uh, different chord characteristics, airfoil selections, and so on, so that this helicopter is competitive in the marketplace and performs its requirements at minimum cost and is also safe and reliable. So essentially what engineers do is they use these math models and they continue using these math models by tweaking around the different design variables until they get a good final design. Sometime, if possible, they can use some mathematical programming techniques to quicken this process up. But typically, it is a blend of expertise of the people and also experience from the past design points. So as far as this course is concerned, we are going to develop mathematical models for the helicopter rotor. And these are going to be useful for designing a helicopter rotor and also for people in general who are interested in knowing more about rotating wing system. So a large amount of this course is also going to be useful to people interested in wind turbines, turbo machinery, propeller type of systems, drones, and so on. So I will stop this lecture here. I will see you in my next video where we are going to start discussing about the main rotor. See you then.